Imagine facing down a creature with tusks longer than you are tall, a body mass rivaling that of a pickup truck, and a temperament that would make even the most fearsome modern predators reconsider their lunch plans. Now imagine that this wasn't even the most famous elephant-like beast of its era. While mammoths may have stolen the prehistoric spotlight, their cousins, the mastodons, were the true armored tanks of the Pleistocene, equipped with an anatomical arsenal that could turn defense into deadly offense in moments. What's truly remarkable isn't just their imposing size, but that evidence suggests these forest-dwelling giants commanded such respect that even larger mammoths would alter their feeding territories to avoid direct competition. The mastodon wasn't just surviving in a world of mega-predators, it was rewriting the rules of engagement in the prehistoric arms race. Before diving deeper into mastodon magnificence, let's address the elephant in the room, or rather the two different elephants that many people confuse. Despite their superficial similarities, mastodons and mammoths were about as closely related as you are to your third cousin. Both belonged to the order Proboscidea, but diverged on the family tree approximately 25 million years ago. To put that in perspective, that's about 10 times longer than the span of human history. Mammoths, with their characteristic curved tusks and towering shoulder humps, were essentially cold-adapted elephants. Their molars featured parallel ridges perfect for grinding tough grasses. Mastodons, however, were built like living battering rams. Their name literally translates to breast tooth, referring to the distinctive cone-shaped cusps on their teeth. Perfect not for grass, but for splintering branches and crushing tough vegetation that would make a modern wood chipper struggle. And those differences went far beyond dentition. Mastodons possessed shorter, straighter tusks that jutted outward like twin spears, not the graceful upward curves seen in mammoths. Their bodies were more compact, lower to the ground and proportionally stronger. If mammoths were the elegant giants of the Ice Age, mastodons were its battle-ready bruisers. Standing 8 to 10 feet or 2.4 to 3 meters tall and weighing up to 12,000 pounds or 5.4 tons, roughly the weight of a school bus, mastodons weren't just big animals. They were specifically designed for power and resilience. Their most impressive weapons were their tusks. Unlike the curved decorative tusks of mammoths, mastodon tusks grew straighter, typically reaching 7 to 8 feet in length. Made of solid ivory with minimal pulp cavity, these were perfect piercing weapons capable of delivering devastating forward thrusts with the full weight of the animal's massive head and neck muscles behind them. Those neck muscles were extraordinary. Fossil evidence reveals massively developed cervical vertebrae with attachment points for muscles that would have allowed precisioned force in head movements. This wasn't accidental. It represented a specific adaptation, enabling mastodons to weaponize their tusks with enough force to penetrate the hide of any Ice Age predator foolish enough to attack. Their skulls featured reinforced bone structures, particularly around the tusk sockets, creating natural crumple zones that could absorb and redistribute impact forces. Even their feet contributed to their tank-like nature. Mastodon feet were broad with five weight-bearing toes, providing exceptional stability and allowing them to pivot their considerable mass quickly when threatened. A 12,000-pound ballerina capable of surprising bursts of rotational movement despite its size. The skeletal structure was equally impressive. Their barrel-shaped rib cage featured individual ribs measuring up to two inches thick, serving as structural reinforcement like the hull of an armored vehicle. Limb bones were equally robust. Mastodon femurs could measure up to four feet in length and eight inches in diameter with internal structures creating exceptional strength-to-weight ratios capable of withstanding compressive forces exceeding 20,000 pounds per square inch. Their distinctive cusped molars weren't just for processing food. They were precision tools capable of exerting bite forces estimated at over 2,000 pounds per square inch, about five times that of a modern lion, allowing mastodons to process virtually any plant material they encountered. Unlike predators who developed offensive capabilities specifically for hunting, mastodons developed their impressive physical attributes largely for defense and environmental manipulation. This over-engineering meant that when threatened, they possessed physical capabilities far exceeding what was necessary for mere plant consumption. The mastodon wasn't just big, it was specifically built to be virtually unstoppable within its ecological niche a walking fortress that likely commanded respect from every other species it encountered, including its mammoth cousins. 
Having impressive physical attributes was only part of the Mastodon success story. How these prehistoric tanks deployed their anatomical arsenal through behavior is equally fascinating. Contrary to early assumptions, Mastodons weren't solitary wanderers. Fossil sites across North America show evidence of small family groups, typically consisting of related females and their offspring. A matriarchal social structure similar to modern elephants, but adapted to forest environments. These units, likely five to ten individuals, provided collective defense through vigilance and coordinated responses to threats. Adult males typically traveled alone or in loose bachelor groups, approaching female herds only for mating. These males, already imposing with larger tusks and builds, became even more formidable during breeding seasons. Paleontological evidence supports this, with numerous male skeletons showing combat injuries consistent with territorial conflicts. Mastodons had sophisticated feeding habits, using targeted browse selection to specialize in different plants for each season. Fossil toothware shows they ate energy-rich twigs in winter, protein-packed leaves in spring, and mineral-rich aquatic plants during growth periods. This flexibility allowed them to thrive in harsh conditions, accessing food others couldn't. They also engaged in ecosystem engineering, toppling small trees to create clearings that would later become new food sources. Their defensive strategies were equally sophisticated. Evidence from trackways and fossil associations suggests specific tactical responses based on the threat type. Against ambush predators like the American lion, mastodons maintained tight group formations with juveniles positioned between adults. When facing pack hunters like dire wolves, they adopted a perimeter defense. Adults facing outward in a circle, presenting an unbroken wall of tusks to approaching predators. When defensive posturing failed, the mastodon's offensive capabilities became apparent. Their straighter, pointed tusks combined with reinforced skulls and powerful neck muscles created a biological spearing system capable of delivering lethal puncture wounds. Remarkably, several predator skeletons from the Pleistocene show puncture wounds, consistent with mastodon tusk dimensions and attack angles. Mastodons also made tactical use of their environment positioning themselves near large trees or embankments to protect their flanks, limiting angles of approach. They frequently utilized wetland environments as deliberate defensive positions, standing in shallows where their size allowed stable footing while predators would struggle in mud. Perhaps most fascinating is the evidence for generational knowledge transfer. The complex feeding and defensive tactics mastodons employed required learning. Their longevity, estimated at 60-plus years based on tusk growth rings, combined with their social structure, strongly suggests knowledge transmission between generations, creating cultural adaptations that complemented their physical ones. Mastodon wasn't just surviving in prehistoric North America. It was actively shaping its environment as a keystone species for millions of years. Understanding their ecological dominance helps explain why these animals earned their tank reputation and potentially struck fear even in mammoth hearts. As the largest browsing herbivores in their forest ecosystems, mastodons influenced vegetation patterns on a landscape scale. Their selective feeding habits created what ecologists call browse lines. Clear, horizontal boundaries in forest growth where vegetation was removed up to the height they could reach, approximately 15 feet with trunk extended. This feeding behavior opened up forest understories, creating habitat mosaics that benefited countless other species. Modern ecological studies of African elephants suggest mastodons likely increased biodiversity in their habitats through these feeding activities. Their impact went beyond simple consumption. By toppling smaller trees to access tender crown foliage, mastodons created natural clearings that allowed sun-loving plants to flourish, increasing ecosystem productivity. Their massive footfalls compacted soil in regular travel routes, creating natural drainage channels that altered water distribution. Even their waste played a crucial role. Each mastodon likely produced over 300 pounds of dung daily, distributing plant seeds across miles while providing nutrient pulses that enhanced soil fertility. This environmental engineering made mastodons ecological architects, creating and maintaining the woodland habitats that supported them. But their dominance wasn't maintained through habitat modification alone. It required active defense of these resources against competitors, including mammoths, when range overlap occurred. 
When mammoths and mastodons encountered each other in transitional ecotones between forest and grassland, competition for resources likely ensued. While direct evidence of confrontations remains elusive, the anatomical differences between these proboscideans suggest how these interactions might have unfolded. Mammoths, with their taller stature but lighter build, excelled in open grasslands, where visibility and long-distance movement were advantages. Mastodons, with their tank-like build and straight-tusked weaponry, dominated in forests where maneuverability between trees and raw stopping power determined success. In the mixed woodland edge habitats where they might compete directly, mastodons held several advantages. Their lower center of gravity and more robust limbs provided better stability during confrontations. Their straighter tusks were more effective for direct forward charges in confined spaces than the mammoth's curved tusks. Most importantly, their browsing diet meant they could retreat deeper into forests where mammoths couldn't effectively follow or feed, essentially maintaining a secure territory that mammoths couldn't easily invade. Evidence from areas of potential range overlap shows fascinating patterns. Fossil distributions suggest temporal partitioning, essentially mastodons and mammoths using the same areas at different times, potentially to avoid direct competition. In regions where both species coexisted, mammoth remains are typically found in more open terrain while mastodon fossils cluster in wooded areas, suggesting spatial segregation even within shared landscapes. This ecological dominance extended to predator-prey relationships as well. Adult mastodons had few natural predators, with only coordinated packs of dire wolves or American lions potentially posing threats to isolated or weakened individuals. Their defensive adaptations were so effective that predator fossils associated with mastodon remains often show evidence of severe injuries, suggesting predator attacks frequently ended badly for the predator rather than the mastodon. Young calves were more vulnerable, but the tight social structure and defensive behaviors of mastodon herds created a nearly impenetrable barrier of protective adults. Remarkably, Mastodon fossil assemblages show relatively few juveniles with predation marks compared to other megafauna of the period, suggesting their defensive strategies were exceptionally effective at protecting their young. After thriving for over 5 million years, mastodons disappeared from North America around 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. Their sudden extinction, alongside many other megafauna species, remains a mystery. Two main factors are often cited, climate change and human hunting. Climate change caused habitat shifts with forests that mastodons thrived in retreating, while human hunting likely contributed through targeted killing. Some argue it was a combination of both factors, the one-two punch hypothesis, where climate stress and human hunting worked together to push mastodons to extinction. But their story is just one chapter in the terrifying saga of prehistoric giants that once roamed the earth. The prehistoric world housed many other creatures even more horrifying than mastodons. Check out our next video right here. This is Roaring Echo. And as always, thank you for watching.